it's funny, eh? Injuries. Well, there's one injuries at the moment now. The way the game is being officiated, suspensions and concussions and injuries because of all the new protocols. But there's so many people on the sidelines. So, you know, it, it, it's really only if you can string three or four games together in a row, you're back in yeah. the top four. Yeah, yeah, that's it. What What are your thoughts on the game today? Do you, do you like the game today? Do you watch much of the game today? Yeah, I still watch um, a, a bits and pieces, mate. I'm I'm not a fan of this hip drop. Like, I, no, I, I, I don't even know what it is. Mate, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so ridiculous. Like, you, you, you're taught to try and get someone to the ground. Now, if... Payne Hass is running at me and you, and I'm 20 kilos, you know, lighter than Payne Hass, and my first contact is never going to stop his momentum. I'm behind him already. But as, you, as you're taught as a kid, your head's got to go on the bum, and, and you're behind the player so you don't knock yourself out, you know? So some of them it's just – I sort of joke with some friends. Alfie Langer would be the most wiped-out person in the game today because that's how he used to tackle. Yeah, yeah. But – yeah, you know, some of them are just I, – I actually put it back on some of the players. It's like, come on, guys, just get up and play the ball <clears throat> because, it, you know, the minute something happens like that, no one wants to see anyone injured. But unfortunately, it's a contact sport, you know. Like, if me and you are running at each other fast and I step you late yeah, and I'm a head taller than you, well, guess what? Your head's going to hit my shoulder. Like, yeah. And if you've got the ball, I can't do anything about it, but next minute I'm in the bin. Yeah. So I, I get the safety element of the game, but I think we've gone a little bit too far the other way. Yeah, no, I, I like that explanation. Um, I, I'm the same. I mean, I, I don't know what a hip drop is or, or not, but uh, we are playing the toughest sport in, in the world. And um, as you said, we don't want to see injuries happen, but no. they are going to occur. And... I know for one, I mean, I'm not, I obviously haven't been an NRL player, but I'm sure when you played, you didn't intentionally go out to hurt anybody. No. And, and no other player <laughs> yeah. does. Yeah. Mate, I, I, it's hard. I feel sorry for the, the, the intimidation. Like the best tackle in the game is momentum. So, you know, if I'm running really fast at you and if you're just off balance, generally I will win that tackle because the momentum of my body is going through you. Um, so, you know, players like Victor Adley and and some of these guys that aren't the biggest guys but are, are such aggressive players, it, it, they nearly need to – it's hard to try and change that, you know, mm-hmm. but they're not getting it wrong. They're getting it wrong by literally 0.3 of a second. Like, that's yeah. what people don't understand. When you watch it in slow-mo, you of, course, of course it looks like you can pull out. But – if you look at their footwork, he's already committed to where his feet are and he can't – and then it's just the momentum of his body. So the slow-mo makes everything look um, so much worse than what it really is. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and that little bit of footwork late, mate, it, it's, you just get it – you get it wrong without trying to get it wrong. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, that's it. It's <clears> – <throat> It's a tough one at the moment. Um, it's certainly very confusing for fans and players. Yeah, but uh, not... that said, that if you lose one, if you if every team loses one of their players, and I think um, one of the boys that um, still works at the Cowboys that we know has said there's some sort of crazy stat that every te- there's a stupid amount of tries that have occurred when you know they're the down versus when teams are back to thirteen and. It's actually such a um, a negative to lose one player now, but some of it, there's this ten minutes in the bin for a hip drop that you've just tried, you swung around trying to just get someone on the ground. Like the, the, the actual swinging motion is not the defender's fault. Like it's the momentum of the runner yeah. that you're trying to stop his momentum, and he's still running. Yeah, you, you, and you see it so much in junior sport because, you know, the, the, the Polynesian kids are so much bigger than yeah. a, a lot of the other kids, you know. So I don't know what they're supposed to do. You can't get out of the way. You're not, no. You don't want to teach that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a hard one. I, 
Yeah. Yeah. Let's I, I, that, Troy. We'll talk about it all night. <laughs> I feel your frustration. Don't worry about that. But speaking of kids, do you have a junior rugby league carnival named after you? <laughs> I do. Yeah. yeah, that must be a pretty good honour. Mate, it is. Yeah, the the Burdekin, um Rugby League because there's there's a few up in the in the region. Gordon Tallis has one, which is the under tens. Um, Laurie Spina, the first Cowboys captain, has oh, one, yeah. which is under elevens. The, the Cowboys run that one. Yeah. And under 12s, there wasn't really anyone. There's There was a Jason Hetherington in Rocky, but the the geographical space between Cairns and Rocky is, you know, huge. So okay. yeah. Burdekin, oh, I'm going to say we're, we're eight or nine years in now, uh, maybe even 10. They sort of put a um, an application to the QRL to do the under 12 carnival. Okay. Um, yeah. And, mate, oh, I was fortunate that, you know, through the NRL period, there's been some great players from the Burdekin that have played for Australia and that sort of stuff. But I suppose I was just fortunate that I was the first from the Burdekin in that modern era of the NRL. Yeah. Uh, and um, jokingly, mate, they couldn't name a rugby league carnival after Kari Webb. So I'm sort of the next best thing. <laughs> <laughs> what um, when, When's the next one? Or is it? Has it, it, it this always year? happens at the Easter school holidays. So okay, yeah, yeah, they all they always do it. Um, generally, the middle weekend of the first um, school holidays, they sort of tend to do it. And okay. mate, they always get a great turnout. They run the the Burdekin Junior Rugby League and the seniors do such a good job. I just mate, I just have my name associated and show up and. Try and convince the new crop of twelve-year-olds who I am. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, nah, fair enough. Um, well, they can listen to this podcast as well one yeah. day too, <laughs> as well, and learn learn a little bit more. But um, do you keep up uh, in touch with some of your or former teammates of the Cowboys and the yeah, and the mate, we've got a punters club that's all ex players. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of people are a bit envious of our punters club because we. Um, we've jagged a few first fours and some big wins over our period. Okay. Yeah. So there's, there's about ten of us on that, um, which is a bit of fun. But uh, do you get to it, make it, much of the reunions at all? Or? Yeah, we get. I didn't get to last year's, but I sort of off the back of my time at the Cutters when I, I moved back to Townsville, I sort of worked with the club to sort of try and make it a little bit better. Um, okay. I, I think it's important to recognise the history of rugby league clubs and the hardest thing for North Queensland was back prior to that, we only ever did a, uh, a little old boys event, which was an hour before the game and and that. But mate, for people that have played for the Cowboys, but now live in Sydney or Melbourne or country anywhere, yeah. it's just not viable for them to come to towns or for a two hour event. Yeah. So I sort of said to the club and spoke to a few um, mentors who are in business in Townsville and said, hey, let's do a bit of an event where it's like a three-dayer, but people can come. And and part of that was because most of the, the Cowboys prior to TV and when they're doing well, they probably got to play more Friday nights and things like that. But yeah. back then it was predominantly Saturday, which is the best time slot for North Queensland. Yeah. We would we would all meet Friday. We, we would have lunch with the... Um, the current playing group um, and then have an afternoon together somewhere and then the Leeds club would look after us for, for lunch and all get together and have a bit of a punt and tell a few stories. The yeah. more you had, the, the bigger the story. Those 20-metre tries become 50-metre yeah. tries. Yeah. And... Um, and then you sort of, depending on uh, most of that first period, they, they won like eight or nine in a row, which is really cool. So... You know, then you'd catch up with the boys after the game and then sometimes we'd do like a lunch, which was more of a quieter family thing on the Sunday. So it actually made it a bit more enticing for old boys to try and get up there um, that still involved not just the old boys but families and things like that. And, um, you know, that's what most clubs are built on, but particularly North Queensland, it's, you know, it's, it's out on its own up there. Um, it's a hard-working sort of region through farming and mining and a lot of those things. And you know, most of the, the supporters and major sponsors and any sort of sponsors are all 
local businesses throughout all of North Queensland, you know. So, yeah, it's nice. Have you got, have you got to a Parramatta one at all? Mate, I haven't. Bit, I, bit, I, bit hard, I guess, I, being I, up in North Queensland. Well, I, mate, I coach up until this year. I'm only coaching one league um, team, but the last three years I coached um, both of my boys' grades in league and – they also play basketball, so I also coach both of their basketball okay. teams as well. Yeah. So it's um, busy, and then busy. through work and all different sort of things, it's made at the end of I think it was last year. Um, I spoke to oh, just on socials, Mickey Vella, I think is driving a, a little bit yeah. of it now. Who was there? Who's a um, a, a, a frolically challenged human <laughs> like myself. <laughs> uh, but I know Michael Witt's on the Gold Coast and there's a few boys that we sort of chat here and there that we've I don't think they've been able to get back and I know they sort of reached out and said, Hey, we should um try and get down to one um and a few of us sort of get down there. So we'll yeah. have to try and uh, organize like a, a Brisbane one or something or Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think, um a couple of dads in our footy club are mad para fans, so they always. Uh, <clears throat> once I told them what my playing number was, do you know what my playing number is? I, I actually don't. I didn't check it out. Is six six six? Okay, wow. That's that's okay. my Parramatta number. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so he, once I told a couple of them, um, but he they have a big members party. At one of the bars in Caxton Street, he said there's a good couple hundred people there, and a few oh yeah, I was, I was there. Uh, I was there two weeks ago for Magic Round. There, yeah, there Lord, you go. Lord, Lord Alfred. So they had. Uh, that's two... it on the top of the corner there. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's the Parramatta venue for Brisbane games. Yeah. Um, I don't think the one later on in the year in August will be there because I think that's at the the games at the Gabba because uh, the is women. Too? Women's uh, soccer world cup, so yeah, not too sure what they're going to do there. One, but uh, I'll, I'll let you know when I find out what, what's happening there. Well, but... That side of town, you're probably going to end up at the pineapple, I reckon. Okay, okay, uh, there's, there's a big bar, it's literally 200 meters from the Gabba. Um, I know all those big barmy armies and, and a lot of those Richie Bano lookalikes, all yeah, that's their starting. The position before they go to the cricket okay I'll, so, I'll, I'll mention that to the club and maybe yeah. that that could be the venue and uh if it gets up and running i'll let you know and uh, perfect <laughs> we'll be there well, what are you doing these days um after footy mate I, when i moved back i sort of did a bit of coaching with the Mackay cutters i was the first coach there off the back of sort of playing and I did uh, a few years down there, then stayed and played after. I sort of knew at the end of two years it probably wasn't for me straight away. Um, okay. Hardest thing for me uh, was I was probably still a similar age to a few okay, yeah. blokes that were coming back to the team. So yeah. it, was, it was challenging but rewarding at the same time. I think from a business point of view, it was my best personal development because I you know I always said to myself if I ever coached I would always um, have that hard conversation with a player whether I was dropping them or not and okay. yeah. um, I, I tried to really sort of stand on that um, so that that was great and then through that last year I did my real estate course and then moved back to Townsville through a bit of a mentor through me playing days which is the Gideon family um, okay. Paul and Joe Gideon uh, had a property company in Townsville were a really um, successful sort of building family in North Queensland and okay. I worked with them for five years and um, through that period of my business partner now uh, who played rugby union so we both grew up in the verdict and he went sort of league and I went rugby union um, my sort of when we meet people I say yeah well, I sort of went league because I could tackle and he went rugby <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But it was um, – he sort of come back from overseas and come across Sombrero, um, who's one of the main oh, yeah. sharks there, yeah, so yeah. Uh, in Canberra. And he brought that back to North Queensland and, um, may we, yeah, he opened a few restaurants and I opened a couple and we were franchise partners and then through that 
Zombrero uh, offered us to uh, be development agents for the brand um, and we sort of had to buy into the brand and, and then our responsibility was to help grow that brand, which we did. And we've opened, excuse me, probably 70 restaurants in Queensland. Okay, wow. like, yeah, eight or nine years. Yeah, wow. Most of them are uh, franchise um, restaurants. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we've taken on the international rights for Ireland, which is what yeah, okay. was my first trip there last year. We just opened restaurant number 17 in Dublin um, last week. So, nice. yeah, mate, between that, it keeps us busy. And yeah. has Parra played in Townsville yet? Uh, they played the prelim final last year, but I don't – Yeah, with that – uh, They may be playing this year as well up there. I think, I think they do that. play up there. But yeah, I'm not, sure. I'm not too sure. Um, We've, we've, we've sort of ventured into our own, having our own, a, a bit of a go at our own sort of business as well now. We, we built a venue in Townsville on the Strand, which is a hospitality bar and, and restaurant called Anilay. Okay. Um, we sort of built that through COVID and had its challenges and all the rest of it. But, mate, we're, we're still learning. We're, we're um, learning a stack, actually, and we've got a great little staff and, Community's been really, really, um, I suppose, look, you know, supporting us and, yeah. and that sort of thing. So, yeah, mate, between that and, and fatherhood and chasing your own kids around, there's not much time left. No, that's it. That's it. Just back, oh, well, I'll have to give Zambrero a go. I mean, there's one down the road here at uh, North Penrith, so I'll have to give it a there crack. You and give you it haven't a- tried it. What? No, I haven't actually. I haven't. There you go. So I what, haven't. What, what um what do you like spice? Oh, probably very low. Very low. I'm so, not a spicy person. Yeah, so and uh, do you have a preferred protein? Oh, chicken probably. Yeah, well chicken and beef are the two popular, but um the beef is really good. Oh, you oh, do I a eat beef. beef as well. Beef yeah. with a lot and um Jalapenos and then do a chipotle sauce, which is a mild. Okay. And right. uh, you won't go wrong, Troy. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll take your recommendation of board. I'll expect a call. <laughs> From ever up in North Queensland, I'll hunt you out. There you go. Uh, I'm in definitely. Brisbane now. Oh, Brisbane. Okay. Well, there you I'm go. I'm in Brisbane. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, next time I'm up in Brisbane, I'll hunt you out. There you go. <laughs> um, I'll see you we'll in the go, Yeah, we'll go and have lunch together. <laughs> Uh, we'll wrap things up with some common league questions and some personality questions. Um, okay. Is there a favourite game? First of all, the common league questions. Is there a favourite game that you played throughout, throughout your career and one you thought, geez, I really just love that game? Oh, mate, I, I was never really much of a, you know, uh, not a historian, but a memory person with games. I suppose the, the most memorable would be our Queensland Cup grand final. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we played really, really well. Um, I got man of the match that day. Um, had some all family and friends there. Uh, and, a, and a young mate who I met when I was eight, who's still a good friend today, um, in a wheelchair, I give him my man of the match medal. Um, so, yeah, he came on the field with me and um, it was nice. So that's probably my most memorable. And, and then the game... Not for the good reasons, but mate, we 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 played Newcastle at home one year, and through that period where they were just killing everyone, um, we walked off at halftime forty nil down. Oh. Yeah. It was uh, I, I wanted to go straight into the sheds and not come out again. <laughs> yeah. What, uh, do you remember what the full time score ended up? Yeah, being? yeah, we won the. Uh, it was. I'm going to say fifty two fourteen. I think it was. Or okay. so we won the second half, but yeah. they they took Johns Kennedy, <laughs> Badiris. Oh. They took yeah, they took them all off. But um, yeah, mate, that was one memorable for all the wrong reasons that we still sort of joke about today. Yeah. But. Um, Mate, what, what doesn't good. kill you makes you stronger, they reckon. That's it. It's good to have a laugh about uh, at things. Uh, now, other than your home ground, did you have a favourite ground that you used to love playing at? Mate, I liked playing at, um, uh, oh, where is it, the West Tigers one in in Belmay. 
Oh, Leichhardt? Leichhardt. Leichhardt. I really liked Leichhardt. And um, through that era when I was playing, they were still playing at um, Ballymore. Not Ballymore. What's the Bulldogs? um, Uh, Belmore. Belmore over. Ballymore's in Brisbane. <clears throat> Belmore, I like really like them suburban grounds. They, yeah. made, they, they were so good. Like the, the big ones were, were fun to say you've been at that ground, but you know when you played at the Sydney Football Stadium where they play the grand final, and mate, we're playing either the Bulldogs or someone like that when they moved them to there, mate. It's twenty thousand, but it, it it feels empty. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you know. Leichhardt, even Campbelltown, that last game, it was 25,000. They are on the fence, drool yeah. coming from their, their, their <laughs> mouths. Mate, Parra was, I always say to people, Parra was a really good stadium as well because it was yeah. on top of you. Um, okay. And I, and I reckon of all the fans, Parra were the best at recognising when they needed to be laid up. You know, it just... When we when we sort of got to within forty of try, scoring a try, the parachant always went up by fans, um, yeah. which was really really cool. So, para, you know, that's I haven't been to the new one. It looks amazing. I I, I can't wait to get to it one day. But um, yeah, that, those suburban sort of grounds, I really enjoyed playing at. Well, if you do come down to Combank Stadium, let me know, and we'll there you get- go. Catch up and I'll be in the Troy uh, Warner podcast, Kate Fox. Will I? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe I'll give you the tour. There you go. <laughs> um, what about a least favorite? Was there a ground that you hated playing at for whatever uh, reason? Playing. Um, oh, mate, through, through the era, like once the Cowboys come in. You know, us and the Broncos didn't like each other. Like you, it was that whole big boy, you know, big little brother sort of syndrome. But through our early years, you know, there was no big brother or little brother. It was little brother getting belted up by, um, by big brother, yeah. You know, and you know, through an era that had a team that was, you know, six to eight Australian players. So yeah, it was sort of just yeah, it was hard, and they were. They knew they were good and they knew they were big and they knew they were fast. And so Brisbane was always one. Um, you know, that was – I played – I didn't play Brisbane, I don't think, at Suncorp. My la- I, I played – my last two Brisbane ones before I went to Para was that um, when they moved it to QE2. Oh, yep. Okay, yeah, QE2. So that, they were out there while, while Suncorp was getting done up. So – and then out of that, oh, my Canberra. Yeah. <laughs> Canberra in winter, <laughs> it's not fun. Yeah, no, nah, don't worry. A lot of a lot of ex-players, when that question comes up, they mention Canberra. Yeah. And, but, yeah, um, I mean, even for a fan, I, I don't New like Zealand, it. so I can't say. Every, there was one I got suspended for doing something stupid um, that didn't get to play. And then the other two, either side of that in years, Maybe passport wasn't valid. <laughs> so didn't I get the airport and go, mate, you can't travel. I was just like, wow. But uh, anyway. Well, you, you mentioned Eric Grove before. He used to hate going to New Zealand. He used to always yeah. try, and, try and get out of it. And, um, mate, he hated anything physical. <laughs> he is a coach now for a uh, um, game. Women's Rams. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I see, so, I, 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 we chat here and there on socials and, and – Throw a bit of shit talk at each other like we, <laughs> we used to, but um, yeah, I did. I did see his coach. I, I could and, never pick uh, Guru as a coach, mate. It, it it was it was not fair for us because he was not a good trainer. I need to be the first one to say that. But then when you do testing, he'd get on and bench press something stupid and run a forty meter something stupid, and it was just like, mate, go away. <laughs> <laughs> Um, was was he then the prankster at Parramatta, or was there another one at Parramatta? Oh, and what, and what, was... what did they get up to? Oh man, the the the, the good pranks I can't say. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. <laughs> but uh, no, that made everyone was Hindy was like even Hindy was a bit of a prankster and did a stack of sort of silly things. Guru, um, I'm trying to think who the real real one was, but. 
mate, everyone tries it on. Everyone sort of, in some degree, has got um, a story of poking the bear, I suppose. I, I was surprised <laughs> you didn't say Mickey Vella. Oh, Vella tried to and thought he was, <laughs> but he probably really wasn't. He, <laughs> he's the Fair first enough. one that said he, he was, but no, he wasn't. Yeah. Fair enough. What about the Cowboys? There was a jokester up there. Back then, but early, most of the older blokes, you know, like as a young kid, I, I said, I say my first away game that I played was Newcastle and we always used to stay at the West where that hotel and that was. And um, my first sort of year, and they always used to G up and, and stuff like that. And I got a call going, mate, it's, John McDonald from Rugby League Week. I, I, mate, I don't know who a journalist was. I was yeah. like 20. Mate, I'm, I'm just in the – I'm going to be in the foyer um, about half an hour, an hour before lunch. Can you just come down in all your kit, all your travel kit, um, bring your boots and, and all of that. We probably just want to get a photo for Rugby League Week. So I'm sitting in the foyer and they timed it so everyone walked past me to go to lunch. <laughs> Literally sitting there for an hour and everyone who's already eaten lunch walked back past me and it was the last person that said, mate, what are you doing? I don't think this bloke's coming, eh? And, <laughs> and then I went, yeah, I, I don't know. And then went, mate, it's a G up. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, yeah. So you, you, you learnt fast back in the old days. because, But then as I got older, I used to do that to yeah, okay, a lot of young folks. And I got Ray Thompson a few times through <laughs> that Young Guns period and, and stuff like that. So... There's always, you know, a few. I suppose you, you, it, it, uh, prankster and pest are sometimes confused. And that's okay. I'd put, I'd put Mick Vella under pest. Pest, okay, yeah, yeah I've heard that too, yeah. And prankster and, and, and there's, there's a few of them. Yeah, no, I have heard that one as well. Who, yeah. <laughs> who, who was the hardest player to tackle? Tackle? Um, mate, Early, I always used to say Wendell. He used to he skinned me a couple of times playing for Broncos, where he skip across field and then that left foot um, against the grain. And it wasn't until when he come back from the you know how he sort of the, the Shelbourne team that he and then he come back and played for Burley for a year. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, that that game, mate. Every time he had a run. 13 players from the cutters would yell out, left foot, left foot, left foot. <laughs> and I was like, mate, I've been beaten too many times. And Dell, after the game, went, mate, I was, it was driving me nuts because I, I couldn't do what I'm couldn't good at. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> everyone knew what was happening. And, uh, yeah, it, we had a bit of a laugh about it afterwards. Yeah. But, De you know, anyone that – Lockie was – just people that are fast. You, 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 yeah. you – you're hard to tackle and you're powerful by default when you're quick, you know. So um, those sort of people um, that have no fear that literally to get me down, you have to tackle me rather than me sort of submit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, nah. So, yeah. Nah, good stuff, good stuff. Well, we'll wrap things up with the personality questions, a set of six that I like to call it. Now, um, uh, I'll change this question because I already know the answer to that one. Favorite sport outside of rugby league is is basketball. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, what about a favorite uh, sporting movie or documentary? What, what's your favorite? Mate, I, I like the sport ones. Um, the uh, basketball probably comes to mind through that. Um, I like my my one through when I was a kid was it's called Hoosers. Who and it was it, it was okay. it was, Gene, it was Gene Hackman who was the coach. That was my favorite basketball movie as a kid, and but then I you know, I liked Coach Carter, and a few of them ones that anything that has, um, I suppose even some of the football one that has a, a bit of a true story or or a story sort of behind it. Okay. But yeah, yeah, the Hoosers one was it was a bit symbolic to us being a small country town in in Queensland. Uh, Hoosers was um, in Ind Indiana and a very, very small town. Gene Simmons, Gene Simmons, Gene Hackman was the, the coach who they brought in. Very fundamental, really hard. The whole town hated him, but he got them all on side because they started winning and playing as a team. And they went to the state finals from a really small country town. So yeah. 
for us, yeah, it was a it was pretty symbolic because we did pretty something similar as kids in under fourteen. Yeah, from from the Burdekin, which was yeah, it was cool. Ah, oh, nice, nice. Favorite holiday destination? Where do you like to get away to? Mate, I, I'm not much of a traveller, but mate, we're fortunate in Australia. Yeah. That well, I'm in Brisbane now, so you go an hour north or an hour south, and you're in some of the best beaches in 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 the country. But mate, for me, I'm North Queensland. Been down here now for nearly eight nine years. Going home um, and fishing and just the real simple sort of things, and yeah. you know, the, my my boys love it. Um, crabbing, fishing. Motorbikes, we can't do a lot of that stuff. So, mate, for, for now, it's, you know, going back to North Queensland and we've got a little hut down at Elva Beach and then some of my close friends <clears throat> who we, who played at the Cowboys in that sort of under-17 era um, yeah. still live in air and, and really close. They've got a – I'll give them a quick shout-out. They've got a little uh, a YouTube channel called Horo Buds. Okay. Horo Buds Fishing Channel and my my boys got to go on an episode when we were home for the carnival um, about a month ago or two months ago. Yeah, nice. So literally, their their life is now complete because they they were on an episode of Horo Buds. <laughs> so, mate, uh, yeah, get getting home and North Queensland and yeah, enjoying those simple sort of things, mate, is is probably my destination at the moment. Ah, nice. Who would be the most famous person you'd love to meet and have a chat with, uh, either dead or alive? Who, who would you like to meet? Mate, I'd like to meet Larry Bird. Um, okay, yeah. After meeting Larry Bird, I, I would like to meet um, Will Farrell. Um, oh, yes. <coughs> who's a bit his, of a character. His basketball uh, movie was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's done a few, a few good movies, but... Um, and yeah, you know, Michael Jordan would be one that I suppose a lot of people, as a sportsman, you know, he's Tiger Woods. Yeah. Um, you know, those sort of people that have been at the absolute pinnacle of of what they've done. Um, you know, I'd, I'd probably like to meet Donald Trump too, just to you know, sit in a room and and. But you know, you meet them, those sort of people, for an hour. They're not telling you the real stories you want to hear. Nah. But uh, you, you'd love to ask. Uncandid questions and get uncandid answers, but you you never will. Yeah, that's certainly some characters there. There, um, oh, I'll change it up. Which three former Eels or Cowboys players wouldn't you want to be stuck on a deserted island with, and why? <laughs> the, uh, Mick Vella. Yeah, okay, oh, pest. Oh, <laughs> pest, serial pest. Um, Chris Thorman. Serial pest wouldn't do anything. wouldn't Wouldn't go and catch food. He'd just eat it. Uh, <laughs> and then from North Queensland, probably Nathan Fien. Me and Feeney <laughs> lived together for six years, so that's long enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, well, speaking of food, what's your specialty dish in the in the kitchen or on the barbecue? Oh, mate, I'm pretty simple. Eh? you can't go past a good steak. Um, yeah. Mate, as long as you cook it the right way, I'm a medium rare man. Um, yeah, a good steak. Um, I'm, mate, I'm pretty ham cheese tomato as a, as a chef. So that's but, all right. Yeah, yeah. So just a good steak and veggies or a pasta that uh, mate the boys are never complaining about. Well, yeah, I'm just a bacon and eggs guy, and steak is that's that's all that's all I can do usually. Uh, favorite musician or band to listen to. Oh God, mate! I'm I'm very adverse in my music genre, so I, I don't, I'm not really a favorite. You know, rock was never mine. R and B was never mine. I didn't mind sort of anything. Um, probably R and B more than anything, just through me basketball yeah. upbringing and and that sort of stuff. But God, who would I say as a one artist, mate? Probably the boss as well. Like oh, I've seen yeah. Bruce Springsteen a few times in concert. Uh, I went to um, Robbie Williams while I was in Sydney when he had his concert there. So any of them guys that I've seen live that are just amazing, you know, it's like you're at listening to on the radio. So, yeah. but no, then I've, I... and that I've seen 
Justin Timberlake and, and Bruno Mars, who their shows were just as good. Yeah. What's your favourite boss song? Favourite oh, Bruce Free Seat song? There's a there's hundred of them. Um, oh, what's the... Uh, the USA, born in the USA is the what's the name, but the... the um, oh... Glory that. days, jungle land. Glory Thund- days, glory days, glory days. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, now there's a thousand jungle just, land, just, thunder I just, road. I, just, I don't know the names of them. I just know. <laughs> the word. Yeah, I, I'm very fortunate because my mum put me onto uh, Bruce Springsteen and uh, love him ever since. And we've been to the concerts when he comes out. So yeah. he's on a world tour at the moment. So hopefully he comes down down under. He's got to come down under. Mate, he was in. The- he was in Dublin uh, a week ago, and yeah. we have a food truck that is a franchise part of the Builder Zombrero food truck, and they were at the concert. Okay. So, right, my our business partner was sending us photos uh, of the boss from yeah. the truck. Yeah, it okay. Was, yeah, it was open air and a pissed down rain, but they, they reckon there was like 20,000, 30,000 people. Yeah, no, nah, definitely. He puts on a great show and a long show as well, about three, three I mean, and a half it's, hours. And... It's, it's amazing that he just doesn't stop, eh? It doesn't take a break and just goes from one to one. To, it's it's You definitely get your value through those sort of artists. Um, yeah, definitely. You don't earn the money because they literally earn their cash. Yeah, definitely. Well, <laughs> Bruce Springsteen, if you're listening to the Paracade podcast, yeah. come down under... <laughs> To Australia, the fans want you. We love you. Come down to Australia, but come on, boss. Come yeah. back one. Yeah, that's it. One more time. One more time. Do, do a John cool. Farnham tour. One more. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Well, Shane Mushbrat, thank you very much for joining me tonight on the Paracay podcast. I really enjoyed the chat. I, I, I didn't expect it to go this long. It just flowed really well, and really enjoyed it. And uh, probably could have spoken for another hour and a bit. Uh, but thank you very much for coming on the Paracay podcast today. And uh, in Brisbane next time, I'll, I'll chuck you down and we'll catch up and say good day and mate, yeah, enjoy some free, 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 I don't, mate, it's, um Appreciate what you're doing. There's a lot of people sort of doing this sort of stuff. I've got a few mates in North Queensland, and mate, it's a passion. It's it's hard work. I don't think people appreciate how much goes into you know doing this sort of stuff. And mate, um, every club needs good fans and. Mate, Parra's obviously got one in yourself, so well done.